In this video, I'm going to show you the steps and tricks involved in how to make a glass fidget spinner. All glass colors are from the greasy glass palette. We have baby blue cheese and piss for the marbles, samurai for the arms, and Yoshi, a color shifting color for the center. First, we will tackle the marbles. This part is pretty straightforward. The key to a good fidget spinner is balance. To do this, the marbles need to be the same size and weight. And if you put arms on the marbles, make sure everything is centered and the arms are the same diameter and length. After we gather up some glass and size it with the marble mold, I like to make my marble a bit smaller so it has the slightest wiggle in the mold. It helps to make the other marble the same size. And make sure the punty is centered, it will help align the arms. For the arms, if the rod is thin, gather a bit at the ends, or if two different diameters, work the ends to the same size. So when you attach it to the marble, they attach the same size and are a good connection. Now that I have one marble and one arm complete, it's time to tackle the second one. Finally, make sure the arms are the same shape and length. It will be key to having good balance. Now, for the center. Since I was planning on using Yoshi and don't have any pre-made tube, for this spinner, I'm going to coil pawn on a 25mm blank. Start the coil by drawing the color on the tube thin, then thick. To make almost a ramp for the next layer, this prevents air bubbles from being trapped. Make sure the end of the blank is square and the wall thickness is even. It will help for an even edge when blown out. Coil potting takes a lot of practice, but it is pretty straightforward. Evenly heating the rod and twisting to apply. Overheating and over twisting will make the walls of the coil start to close in. I then use my jacks to flare open the end. Try and maintain even walls the entire length. To save some color, I cap the coil with clear. Since the coil ends up a bit thicker, I use a 32mm blank with a square end and an even wall thickness. Then I use my V-blade to condense and cool a section to create an acute angle to simply snap and leave behind a clear cap. Next is to even the wall thickness of the coil pot. This takes a fair bit of time. If using a blow hose, you can quicken the process. Only once the section of the blank is bold and hot, hold the end of the blow hose closed. It holds the pressure and it helps to even the wall thickness. Once an even wall thickness has been achieved, I use a metal caliper to check the outside diameter. Pop a hole and flare the wall open. To size the bearing hole, we are going to use a bearing with a pair of tweezers. Please note, use a bearing with a metal center 
a plastic center will melt. You can use anything to size the hole. A socket from a socket wrench or a shaved down graphite rod would also work. Make sure to not get the bearing too hot or it will stick to the glass. You can use beeswax to help it from sticking. When a bearing fits and the wall thickness is even, you have a few options. You can cool it down and cut the ends with the wet saw, then use a flat lap to square the ends. But today, I'm going to use shears and round the edges with the flame. Cut straight to get a square edge. and then resize with a bearing. Next, I use a 4 mil punty to make a Y. Now I tear off the 25mm blank, pick a hole, and flare the hole open. Now, shear away some clear. Decide how large you want the center ring and cut. Take note, you can always trim some more off, but it's hard to put some back on if trimmed too much. Once the desirable amount has been removed, we will round and polish the end, continuously making sure the bearing still fits. Next, we remove the Y. It's always better to have a center that is a bit larger rather than a center that closes in when you attach the arms and no longer fits a bearing. Finally, assembly. Every punty needs to be centered. It'll help to keep everything balanced. Attach by pressing firmly then slightly pulling back out. Making sure everything is centered by rotating until completely solid. Dry and heat only the outside of the ring. It will help to not distort the center bore. Checking to make sure the bearing still fits. Attach the other arm the same way. Once everything is centered, we are going to use one punty to bridge to the other, making sure to work in the connection with a small flame. Work in the connection on each arm. Testing the bearing after each arm to make sure it still fits. If not, you can use a reamer to open the hole up a bit making sure not to distort the wall thickness. Remove the bridge and clean all the clear off the marble.
then round with the marble mold. Do that for the other side as well. Then in the kiln for an annealing cycle, and then we will discuss bearings. Now let's discuss bearings. We have many options, but today we're going to keep it simple. The most common bearing in fidget spinners is a 608. My first bearings came from a machine shop and were completely metal. They created a lot of friction and slowed down quickly with spin times of 30 to 45 seconds. After a bit of research, I found out skateboards use 608s, so I picked up a pack of Bones Reds, cleaned the bearings, and upgraded the spin time to over a minute. After I got Bones Reds, I was talking to a skateboard friend who suggests I upgrade to Black Panthers. Black Panthers not only look impressive, but upgraded my spin times to just over 90 seconds and are extremely quiet. Finally, I upgraded to R188 bearings, upgrading my spin time to over 3 minutes, and are almost silent. These get a bit harder to use because of the smaller center. Any bit of off balance will cause the spinner to wobble like crazy. You can create a center direct around the bearing, but it's almost impossible to get a perfect balance. That's why I use a 608 to R188 adapter. They make it so the glass ring centrifugal force is further from the center and can be a bit more forgiving. They also have a wide variety of caps. The R188 bearing and adapter are purchased from FidgetHQ.com. Cleaning the bearings is a must. Out of the package, bearings have grease that reduces heat but adds friction. Cleaning the bearing is pretty simple. All you need is 99% isopropanol alcohol. Remove any dust shields and soak the bearing in alcohol for two minutes. Periodically spinning the bearing. Rinse underwater to force any remaining dirt out. Back in alcohol for another minute, periodically spinning the bearing. Then spin dry. Fresh out of the kiln, this spinner is looking amazing. The greasy glass colors look great together. Now to fit the bearing. The spinner is going to get an R188 bearing with an adapter. First, make sure the bearing fits the hole. Hopefully, it's a nice tight fit. If the bearing is loose, you can put a few dabs of super glue on the bearing to get a closer fit. This is the most crucial step in getting the fidget spinner balanced. A slight shift when setting the bearing will take a perfectly balanced spinner and make it wobble uncontrollably. Do a few test spins and make adjustments accordingly. This part takes time and practice. If all arms are centered and identical and the center has an even wall thickness, this part should be no problem. Only use a dab of glue at a time and wait for it to dry. This will help to keep the bearing in place. Spin the spinner and check for balance. If the spinner is still balanced, use a few dabs to permanently cement in the bearing. Spin times will also vary not just with bearing choice, but also with how much glass was used. This spinner clocked in at just over 3 minutes. This fidget spinner is going to be given away in a few weeks on my Instagram account. Follow my Instagram for information on how to win. A link to my Instagram will be in the description.
thanks for watching.